Distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends, to my fear hosts, Valévenu Egan Okoid Tau Takshu. My sincere thanks to Siobhan Burke, Jane Daly, and their team at the Irish Theatre Institute, who through their hard work made today's event possible. Last November, in light of the revelations in the Gate Theatre, my predecessor, Heather Humphreys, met with the leaders of the Irish theatre organisations who had co-signed a statement condemning sexual harassment and abuse of power of the in theatre in Ireland and internationally. That meeting focused on how the theatre sector could best move forward on the issues that had arisen, arisen in Irish theatre, a topic about which there has been much public discussion of late. The resources of my department were made available to assist the sector in any way we could, and since that meeting, my department has supported Siobhan and Jane in their work to set out some of the practical actions that the theatre sector could take. Speak Up and Call It Out was born out of these discussions, and today is about the elimination of abuse of power and the safeguarding of health and well-being, and of course, the career potential of those working in this sector. I have stated that I wanted today to be seen as an initiative of the theatre sector for the theatre sector that is led by the theatre sector. And hopefully, by the end of today, you will have agreed a code of conduct that all can abide by. And this, to my mind, is vital for the successful future of the arts in Ireland. Abuse of power is not, unfortunately, unique to the theatre sector. It occurs in all walks of life, but recent events have shone a light on the dark place in the arts. We rely on the arts and on theatre in particular to challenge society and to call out hypocrisy. We know how important that role can be, particularly in times of national stress, be it as a result of political tensions or economic crises. And this past year has forced the cultural sector to look inward and to call out unacceptable behaviour in our world. I have been taken with the courage of those who have spoken out. It is our duty today to respond to that and to act. And today, you are all taking the lead in addressing an unacceptable culture that needed to be challenged. And this action in Ireland is mirrored around the world. We have seen the initiative in the Royal Court in the UK, in Australia with the Save Theatres movement, and in Europe where the artist-led engagement initiative is tackling sexual harassment, sexism, and power of abuse in the Belgian arts field. And we can work with our international colleagues to address the gaps and support for people who devote their lives to theatre. These include the areas of production, writing, direction, design, performance, producing, management, marketing and administration from the full-time staff to the short-term freelance artist and sole trader. And there is a need to ensure that no one in the sector is more protected than any other and that no role in the production of theatre is recognised to be less than any other, but that all are equally entitled to the same support, redress and resolution process. And as it stands, there are gaps in awareness and provision in terms of where people can go. If you are working within a company structure where procedures and processes are in place, then the issue is about that organisation, its governance structures and its commitment to exercise the appropriate measures and processes to address any complaints. If, on the other hand, freelancers are working on short-term one-off projects within a non-company structure, there may be both a lack of awareness and provision around where people can go to address such grievances. And this is one of the anomalies around access to supports that will be discussed today. And I hope that this will lead to proposals and ideas about appropriate supports and services which could enhance existing infrastructure around addressing bullying, harassment and the abuse of power. It is important that abuse is not just identified and recognised in all its forms, and there are so many different types of abuse, but that the victim knows where to make their complaint. I will be very pleased to work with the Irish Theatre Institute and the Arts Council to follow up on any recommend recommendations which are made today in this area, and I commend the progress already made thus far. I'm aware that I'm speaking predominantly to a female audience today, but we do know that bullying, harassment and sexual harassment are not just perpetrated by men in positions of power. It is a fact, however, 
that recent renovations have been overwhelmingly for, from women, most notably from those who participated in the Gate Review and the 72 signatories of the letter to the Irish Times. And this suggests that women are more likely to experience abuse, but it may also mean that work needs to be done to provide supports to men to speak up in the knowledge that they too will be heard and receive the supports they also require. Bullying is in every industry, and it's not specific to gender, nationality, social background or age. The definitions and descriptions of bullying and harassment, which will be discussed throughout the day, will make clear how it can be targeted by anyone, at anyone, in any location or circumstance. And this needs to be stamped out and the consequences applied. I do believe we are at a pivotal moment in time to achieve that goal. Arts and arts organisations, by their very nature, lead and reflect societal change. And as we work together to ensure people are heard and listened to, we would see that the stories that they tell, the work they make, the society we share, begin to change shape for the better. The voice of the excluded, the less powerful, the marginalised will be amplified and broadcast. Ninyarth Gakur Lakele. Still, as we look forward with hope, it will be remiss of us not to reflect back on the hurt and the wrongdoings of the past, and much of it has never been publicly voiced. And this process will not ignore the hurt and damage that has been done to so many people across the sector, both men and women, across too many years and in many locations, and we must honestly acknowledge that failures have occurred. It is simply just not acceptable. This culture cannot be allowed to continue under any circumstances anymore. Power imbalances impact, impact everybody's life, personally and professionally, individually and collectively. It is our shared responsibility to enable and ensure equality of standing for all members of our community. Theatre is a collaborative art form where people with diverse skills, backgrounds, ages and genders work together to make sure that art reflects the world around us and the society within which that we live. And it is in this spirit of collaboration and cooperation that when harnessed can drive real change. So let us say today that we will no longer ignore our problems. Let us work together and take collective responsibility to change behaviour and create a safe and respectful and dignified workplace. Let us ensure that those who fail to observe these values and practices will be held to account. And to borrow a phrase from across the Atlantic, time's up. And to borrow one of my own, it's up now. Through a collaboration of artists, organisations, funding agencies, institutions and government departments, we will undertake to make change happen. In true theatrical form, we will play the role in which we have been cast and give the best performance we can to make this a safe sector. Together, we will encourage the excellent standards of creativity for which Irish theatre is justly famous, and we will do so without fear, silence, and the abuse of power. Chilean writer Isabella Lande said, what I fear most is power with impunity. I fear abuse of power and the power to abuse. And of course, these are subjects that will be tackled on today. And nevertheless, in the spirit of hope, which we do embrace today, we also recall Spanish philosopher Baltasar Gracian, who said, the sole advantage of power is that you can do more good. And I believe that wholeheartedly and fundamentally. Together today, we can make the difference. Speak up, call out and engage. Grimida Margrave.